Good morning. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with the review of the weekend trading reports for uh, November 14th, 2015. Uh, the market is in sideways normal conditions on an annual basis using weekly RSI 14, right in the middle of neutral at 49 out of 100. Using the 10 day NDX, we are at one or very, uh, very oversold on a 10 day basis. See in the market mosaic that uh, price with respect to the 200 day moving average is at minus 1.21%, uh, putting us deep into sideways. Slope of the 50 remains green at uh, green bullish at 0.58%. ADX is neutral at 23. The risk index uh, is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. The threshold between risk on and risk off is 1.0. Reading right now is. 0.978, which puts us into risk off. The Z score is computed by looking at the last 5,000 trading days, finding the average and standard deviation. This computes to a Z score of minus 0.34. You can see a 90 day histogram of that indicator here. Uh, we have just tipped into the red. That's a warning sign for uh, increasing volatility ahead and favors uh, shorter term uh, trading time frames like uh, day trading or short term swings uh, and it advises us to uh, uh, respect our stops and be ready for a uh, market that can go sharply in either direction. The theoretical exposure of ETF2 is at 30 percent. The model portfolio is at 60 percent. You can see the leaders in blended month rebalancing. The next reevaluation is one December, not one November. That's a typo. You can see the current leaders here based on Friday's close for the ETF 13, 22, and 32. Quick look at the ETF 13 and 32 portfolios in BMR dominated by cash positions. These are symbols that are under, under their four month moving average. Um, technology and US large caps and treasuries at the top. In the ETF max, um, being dominated here once more by uh, some of the commodities, but also the volatility products. And you're seeing some um, interest income uh, ETFs as well. S&P 500, um, we'll be looking at uh, Molson, uh, which has had a great one week and one month and is green across the board, as are DuPont, General Electric, Total Systems. Uh, sharp sell-off in Nike. Uh, we'll be looking for either a rebound or a continued sell-off, so we're likely to get some volatility in either direction puts it in a critical state. That's why we like it. Uh, market health check. Uh, you can see that we pulled back from the uh, from this recent swing high, which was a test of the previous swing high at 212. Uh, we've pulled back just underneath the 200 period move in average. We're uh, at the Bollinger Band mean or slightly below. Uh, River is still sloping up, but the 10 period regression line is down. The 30 period is up. And uh, you can see that the jaws of percent price oscillator have opened to the downside, warning us about uh, more danger to come. Uh, in my view, this um, support level here at uh, about 202 is crucial. Um, this, the edge of the river at 201 uh, is where I really need to see support so that we can see this as a pullback after the first strong leg up. Uh, failure at the edge of the river, though, opens us up to moves down to uh, 199, uh, 196, and 190 to, to pretest the previous uh, swing low. So we're in a critical state. This should make it interesting uh, first couple days of next week. World market model, according to ETF2, uh, three out of 10 are on buy signals, and so that puts us, should read 30 and 70 percent, sorry. Um, S&P at 60 is stronger than the globals at 52. Uh, U.S. technology at 64, then U.S. large caps at 60, then small caps and mid caps inside the U.S. Two strongest sectors, uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, two weakest Latin America and, uh, uh, and Asia less Japan. World market model, is everything in the U.S. is a, uh, above um, average with the exception of the mid caps across the board, uh, China, South Korea, Vietnam above average in Asia, otherwise below average or well below average, Japan is above average. Um, U.S. real estate, corporate bonds and treasuries holding above average, Mexico above average, but everything else in the Western Hemisphere is looking weak. Only Belgium is above average in, um, in Europe. 
ETF 30, looking at the, through the ETF 2 lens, finding essentially the same things that the BMR does, and that is um, U.S. technology, some financials, but mostly interest, uh, interest-bearing accounts and ETFs. Uh, in the Dow 30, uh, DuPont has uh, moved to the top of the stack at 91 out of 100, and then um, the previous winners, General Electric, Micro, uh, Microsoft, McDonald's, Nike, Goldman Sachs, um, and the in the bottom stack here, uh, Caterpillar showing yellow and red shows some signs maybe coming off the bottom. IBM and Walmart still lagging. Uh, liquidity stats based on 30-day average volume, daily dollar volume that is. Uh, some 5DDs in uh, commodities technology, uh, Nasdaq 100 and the S&P tech. Lots testing out well on the auto framer as we would expect. Uh, notice that the, the bulls have uh, uh, relinquished the lead to the bears who have now crossed the zero line here at the uh, of ADX and now bulls, uh, excuse me, the bears are in charge. Uh, after a long period of uh, declining volatility, bottoming out here just at the edge of, uh, edge of quiet, now uh, uh, if we saw some uh, upward ticks here, then that would uh, indicate maybe a short-term run of volatility ready to increase. We have uh, overreaction and channeling signals on, on U.S. tech. Uh, plenty of the Dow tests out on uh, the auto framer at greater than 2 to 1. you got lots of channeling and overreactions, 5 DDs and triple screens to choose from, uh, m mostly under the RSI 2, so two harsh days of selling, and only Apple uh, above three to one on the frog. Lots to choose from here. Uh, DuPont looks interesting to me here as the leader of the Dow and a percent winner on Friday in the midst of lots of pain. I mean, Cisco was down 6%, Apple down 3%, but DuPont was up one and a half. Inside the ETFs, basically the same story. Everything basically testing out well on the auto framer. You got a handful of 5DDs, some channeling and overreactions. Everything suffering on the RSI too. Uh, more to choose from on the frog. Uh, auto framer and regression line fractal framework for those framing trades and those and those techniques. Gold and silver remain interesting. And then on the daily squeezes, these are. Uh, symbols that have been compressed on a daily basis. They're less than 0.7 of their average range in the last 30 days, but they still have a large potential intraday move based on the range stat uh, divided by their risk. Uh, so Monsanto, Honeywell, Apple uh, is of interest there. And mo more market mosaic. I'll just flash through these without commentary generally. I'll just observe that the RL30 is the health of the market. It made almost a, it moved from minus three sigma to plus three sigma and then crossed over outside of its own 10 period move and average. Uh, it crossed over its 10 period move and average outside of the plus or minus one. So that uh, indicates a potential for a, uh, a reversal. That's why we track that one on a daily basis. Fail stats, gain stats, gap stats. How sharp that sell-off has been. Pull it back near the bottom of the river, and the uh, the 10 has fallen out of its own normal range as and the 30 is coming back. But longer term, there's some healing still going on. As you can see, the 90 uh, has followed this generally upturning uh, motion. Uh, the only concern here is the rolling over of the Bollinger Bands uh, Bollinger Band River. All right, that's everything I wanted to cover uh, for this week. There's lots to choose from. Short-term trading is favored. We'll be looking at all the fro hybrid frog <coughs> champions in the chat room for our intraday trades. Uh, so this is Ken Long with Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.